Becker. I'm a distinguished engineer with IBM and working on IBM connections and the integration of IBM connections with other products such as WebSeer Portal and IBM ECM, IBM BPM and so forth. So the acronyms that I just mentioned stand for Enterprise Content Management and Business Process Management that we are also integrating with going forward. For today, I have an agenda of a couple of points. Um, one thing is um, a brief introduction to social business and some, pe uh, some key aspects that we think is uh, very important about it. Um, then I'll talk about social networking with IBM Connections um, and then get into the main topic of the session, which is using IBM Connections and WebSeer Portal together in order to realize social websites. And then I will talk more specifically about how social portals can be built with the combination of WebSeer Portal and IBM Connections and give a brief summary. Uh, before we start, I'd be interested in how many of you are already familiar with IBM Connections? Okay, good number. Um, and how many of you are already familiar with WebSeer Portal? Okay, somewhat smaller number. Um, okay, so then I guess um, most of this should be new for you. Social business is a very important topic now for IBM. We basically realize that more and more companies will have a strong need to get more connected inside with their employees but also get more connected outside with their business partners and with their customers, most importantly. And this is a great opportunity because by becoming a social business and building better connections with their customers, the companies can gain much more insight into what customers really want. They can also get feedback. And we'll talk about this more in the session, how it is possible to, ex uh, to establish a bi-directional website, a social website that is not just for information dissemination, and giving information to people, but also to get feedback from people, most importantly. In, in social business, in IBM, we have identified a couple of key priorities. One is establishing reach, to basically reach the people that you want to interact with, reach your employees, reach your business partners, reach your customers, most importantly. And then the next point is engage them. Um, once you've reached them through whatever mechanism, through ever, whatever channel, you might use, um, then it's very important to really have an engaging user experience and um, get the customers, the partners, to, the users really to participate and to contribute and give feedback. And um, then information can really flow both ways and the dialogue can be established. And then once that is achieved, once you have reached people, um, once you have engaged them, uh, then it's very important to discover what those people really are interested in, what those people really want, what's really important to them. And once you have done that, then of course you can act, and you can act in a very decisive way uh, based on facts and uh, based on insights. A couple of key trends that are very important here. One is of course the social networking trend. Meanwhile, we can observe that most, um, um, almost one-eighth of the world's population is on Facebook, and there's of course many other social networks as well. So a huge part of humans is already on social networks and used to social networks. So it has become a very predominant way of communicating and interacting. That's one key trend. The other key trend is mobile. And that, of course, also further accelerates the social networking trend because a lot of people use social networking from their mobile devices. And mobile devices enable them to participate in social networks from wherever they currently are. What we see here is that the mobile device number has already exceeded the number of desktops and laptops. Um, so more mobile devices are now being used to access these kinds of services um, than stationary um, uh, machines or laptops. That's also a very important trend, which means that these kinds of applications, these kinds of social websites, will have to have a very strong uh, mobile experience uh, and um, have a first-class mobile user interface. Another very important point is analytics. This is something where there have been a couple of key technical breakthroughs in the last couple of years. In the past, uh, there was not as much compute power and the algorithms were not as smart. But more recently, the compute power has grown a lot and we have much better algorithms now. So now we can really run very smart analytics over content and information and can gain very interesting insights from that. The early adopters of social networking and social business find value in three key areas. One is customer care and insight. can be used, as I mentioned before briefly, to gain better insight into your customer base and to really engage your customers in a dialogue, to learn from them what they really want and what they really are interested in. Another very important topic that's also somewhat related to the first is product and service innovation. It's possible to put out some ideas 
and get feedback on those ideas from customers and then innovate with business partners and um, employ, uh, internal employees to enhance those products and services to really meet the customer needs. That's another big opportunity. And then, of course, workforce optimization is a very important topic here. It's possible to use these technologies to also internally become more efficient, to have your network um, in your enterprise better built out and connect your employees better so that they know what others are working on, they know what information already exists and can leverage that across the social network in the enterprise. Okay, after this general introduction, I'll go to the next section, which is social networking with IBM Connections. In IBM Connections, a very important concept is the social graph. What we mean by social graph is the connections between people. Uh, that's, of course, very important, who's connected with whom. Uh, build out your social network, invite people to your network, join other people's network, and thereby engage with a larger community in your enterprise or in your, um, in your uh, website. Um, the other very important aspect of it is also connections and relationships between people and information. Um, that's the other very important part of the social graph, that people are connected to certain content. Some people might be the authors of certain content. Some people might have commented on content. Um, other people may be following that content. So that's the other very important part. Not only relationships between people and people, but also relationships between content and people. And with that social graph, of course, it's possible to store a lot of meaningful, interesting information. Um, in a sense, the social graph becomes the memory of an enterprise and remembers a lot of things that are important. It also becomes a very interesting basis for running analytics and deriving new insights from that information. Um, so, for example, in Connections, we run analytics over the social graph to make recommendations, recommendations for people whom you might want to connect with, recommendations for communities who likely will be of interest to you, and recommendations of content that is probably important or relevant to you. Inside of Connections, we have a couple of services to facilitate social networking, but there's two topmost important entities that I'd like to introduce first. One is profiles, and profiles is basically what in IBM Connections represents people. People can create a profile, um, they can add additional information to the information that is anyway stored about them in elder directories or other information sources like HR systems, um, and then when people add this information, it becomes more personal, right? It's not just the general information about somebody like location and job description and maybe some um, reporting um, guy, uh, some, some reporting structure. It goes beyond that and people can also say what, I'm, what are they interested in, what are they working on, what customers are they working with, and um, basically provide their digital CV. They can also tag themselves, tag others, and build connections to others by inviting, uh, inviting them to their network and um, getting invited and joining other people's network. So that's what's possible in profiles. Beyond that also then it's possible to share quick information in status updates that get visible to the network of the person or people who follow that person. So it's not only a way to provide information about yourself, it's also a way to communicate with others via your message board and via microblogging. The other very important service in IBM Connections is communities, and communities are representing groups of people. In communities, people can come together to share particular common interests and exchange information on those topics. They can also work on projects together, um, or they could use it for other purposes. It's pretty open-ended what the communities could all get used for. Inside of communities, then, you can have a variety of content types. You can have social bookmarks, you can have blogs, you can have files that are shared inside of a community. You can also integrate remote document libraries into a community, for example, FileNet or CMN, uh, CM8 libraries. You can have wiki pages inside of communities, activities, forums, media, such as photos or videos. And you can also share ideas inside of communities. Apart from that, apart from profiles representing people and from communities representing people, uh, groups of people with common interests, um, we have a couple of other key things in connections. One is the homepage, and the homepage is a very quick way to gain an overview of what you are following, um, what's going on in your network, what's going on in your communities. That's all aggregated and displayed inside of the homepage. And then analytics is very important. As I mentioned before, we do social analytics, and then in various parts of the user interface that I will show later, you will see recommendations for what is likely going to be interesting for you. This is the people profiles um, user interface at a high level. Um, what you can see here 
is um, there's an area that shows the picture and um, shows some basic information. You can also click to edit your profile. And then there's a section here that typically gets populated out of existing systems. So this section here with the standard information is something that the employees typically would not have to enter. Instead, connections can be configured to pull that information from existing LDAP systems or HR systems or other systems you might already have that already stores information about your people. And then it automatically populates it into this part of the user interface. Um, what people can then contribute is the information in the other tabs. Most importantly, the board, where people can quickly share what they are doing, what they are working on, uh, where they are currently traveling and things like that. Um, then there's contact information, background, and recent posts. And the background is also something that by default people can fill in a lot of information. Um, that's the kind of information I mentioned before, what's my digital CV, basically. And then in profiles, it's also possible to tag yourself and tag others. And the tags are very important to really organize the information and be able to find people that have expertise in certain areas. So, for example, in IBM, we now have about um, 400,000 active people in connections. Um, that's a lot of people, and it would be pretty hard to find people working on particular topics or having particular interests. But with the tech cloud and with the tech faceting, it's possible to achieve that. Um, you can select a couple of tags, and then, sure enough, you will find those people that are are relevant to that, uh, to that particular combination of tags um, as they describe a topic. So it's very important to populate the tags and to use the tags in order to then be able to really find those people that you're looking for inside of connections profiles. What you can also then do is you can build your network and the network is visualized here. Um, here you see who's already in your network and you see the invites that other people send you. You can click to accept those invites and grow your network that way. Or you can, of course, also actively go to other people's profiles and invite those people to your network. Then they will see a network invitation and can join your network. So that's a way how you can build your network over time. The other very important topic is following. Apart from having people added to your network, you can also follow people. And that's independent of whether or not those people are in your network. For example, I have a network of about 200 people now in IBM, but I don't follow all of those people. I maybe follow 30 people, and um, that way I can really tune what information I want to get versus um, what I don't want to follow. What's also important, and that is something that is across the entire Connections user interface, uh, we have the business card as a way to get in-context information about people as well. This is now shown at the example where it's brought up in this context of the profile, but um, the business card can be brought up on any name in connections, wherever it is, whether it's in blogs or wikis or forums or communities, all names are live names, and wherever they are, you can bring up this business card to get quick information about the person. This is actually something that we are also integrating into other products, so this business card also works equally in WebSeo portal, and it also will work in the future in ECM products and BPM products and so forth. The next important service I'd like to introduce is files. Files basically enables social file sharing. It allows to share individual files, like this conference presentation, with people in your enterprise. Initially, you might share the file just with a couple of people. Then um, you might share the file with more people, and these other people might share the file with yet more people, so that the file can be shared in a very flexible pattern. Uh, basically, the sharing pattern is as flexible as sending email, but the big benefit is the file will be stored on the server. Uh, people will always have access to the current version of the file. They can comment on the file, they can interact on the file, and the file really becomes a first-class entity that's, uh, get, that's getting shared in the context of the social graph. And then, of course, it also becomes um, explorable and findable, for example, in the enterprise search or through the exploratory web user interface that we have for files and connections. What this means is it's a very profound change of the information architecture of an enterprise. In the past, it was like files like this, files like this conference presentation would be sent via email to a couple of people as an attachment. But that is, of course, having multiple disadvantages, right? Uh, people might be looking at outdated versions. Um, of course, then also every now and then you have to clean up your email file and you have to delete stuff, you might lose it. And when, for example, you're looking for a particular important presentation and um, it's not happening to be something that somebody sent you at some point in time, then you will never get it, right? It's not explorable. All these possibly valuable attachments in emails, they are locked away in individual people's email accounts and nobody can search them. 
on the other side, if files are shared in social file sharing and become part of the connection social graph, then it's a big difference. Then the files are readily available. They are linked to people in the social graph. And uh, most importantly, they are really up there on the server. Um, they are indexable, they are searchable, and they are findable. And that way you can really find the information that you are looking for. Just one example, a while ago I had to put together a presentation and I was asked on short notice to add a couple of business cases for connections to that presentation. And uh, it was already in the evening and I had to find that information. So what I did is I went to connections files in IBM and we have now meanwhile 500,000 files shared there. Um, and what I did is I, I clicked on the text connections and business case and then within a couple of seconds I had five files identified that were related to connections and business case and actually two of them had the information that I was looking for. So within a couple of minutes I was able to find that information that I never could possibly have obtained via email um, or communication with other people on that particular evening because most of the people were already off and um, there would have been no chance to, to get that information. But if the information is shared in files, then it's readily available. You can just search for it, you can just browse for it using the text, and you can find it immediately. All right, the next service I'd like to talk about is communities. And communities are very, very central in IBM Connections. It's really what enables people to work together and to collaborate. You can exchange and uh, share information in the communities. Um, it can be information of different kinds. Um, all the typical information like files, media, blogs, posts, forums, wikis, activities can be used. Um, the access to communities is very flexible. You can make communities completely public. Um, then everybody has access and um, the information is broadly available. You can also make the communities uh, more limited and require people to request to join. And then after they get approved, um, they might join the community. Or you can make a community completely private so that only community owners are able to add people. In the most extreme case, a community could be really, really small and maybe be just a community of four people. In the other extreme case, it might be a community that has 50,000 people or more. It's also possible then to create sub-communities inside of communities. So if you have uh, some, some overarching topic and under that overarching top, uh, topic you have subtopics, then you can create communities for those subtopics as well. Some more recent additions that we have for community function is media support. So it's possible to upload and um, share videos and images and then also to inline view them in this user interface of communities. Um, there's ideation, it's possible to share ideas inside of communities. Then people in the community can vote on the ideas and you can find out what are the best ideas. It's possible to integrate ECM libraries such as FileNet and CM8 into communities. And it's also possible to enable moderation on communities. That means if people post information, other people can look at it, um, normal community members can look at it, and if they think something's problematic or inappropriate, then they can flag that information, and the uh, moderator will be able to look at it and decide whether it should be kept or whether it should be discarded. The next couple of screenshots, I have a, a demo of how communities look like uh, in connections in the current release. So this is the community uh, page uh, where you can see all my communities and public communities. Um, there's a tag cloud here that allows to explore the communities. You can select a couple of tags to filter down to the communities you are looking for. Also very importantly, here you see the recommendations that I mentioned before. So this is the recommendations for communities that are given based on social analytics. And you see here a couple of communities that likely are of interest to the user. And um, you can select some communities e either here or here to navigate into a community. And inside of a community, it looks like this. You have um, this navigation on the left-hand side, which shows all the services that have been activated on this community. And um, in this case, I'd like to highlight the media gallery that has been added. And in the media gallery, you can have photos or videos. When you click on one, then you see more detail about that. Um, and you can also, very importantly, provide comments and um, interact on that file. Um, the files are also versioned, so like any file, the videos and images are also versioned. And you can also, as you see here, flag it as inappropriate if you think um, this picture is inappropriate or if uh, another file is wrong, it could also, could also be flagged. Then there's also this gallery view, which uh, shows all images or videos in a particular community. And then from here you can also directly view a video or an image. So it's very conven convenient, you can just view these in line. 
The other function I'd like to highlight is ideation. Um, this is the idea generation that I mentioned before, where people can post ideas to a community, and then other people can vote on these ideas. What you see here is a couple of ideas have already been submitted here, and a couple of votes have already come in, and you can sort by top voted, so that with one glance you can see what are the most popular top voted ideas. And then you could take those best ideas and you could graduate them and it automatically turns into an activity that can be used to further work on that idea and enhance it. If you go into a particular idea, it looks like this. So you see the basic information here again, but you can also see more information such as the comments on this idea. And the comments, of course, are very important. In the comments, you can really have discussions about that idea and the idea can also be further enhanced in the uh, conversation uh, in those comments. Right, and then the other thing I'd like to highlight is the integration of libraries. Um, in communities, it's possible to share files directly um, and also images and videos, as I showed before. But sometimes you also want to integrate other libraries into communities. For example, if you have an ECM system for reference information, such as CM8 or FileNet, um, or if you have, for example, uh, SharePoint for departmental libraries, you might want to integrate some of these libraries for reference into community user interfaces. And that is possible through the library widget that we also provide. It can connect to ECM systems such as CM8 and FileNet and can also connect to SharePoint. And then it injects the user interface and um, does provide on the class integration of that information. So you have a kind of window from the community into the library that is on a remote system. And then in communities, the end user does not really notice that, right? The end user just sees what they are allowed to see in that backend system. Um, they can view the files and folders and um, they could also click on the context menu and um, have some uh, typical actions like download, check out, edit document, edit properties, replace, delete, and so forth. So that all works through this user interface. Only then the information is actually stored in the respective backend. It's also possible to see more information about the file. And um, here you also have access to the about information, to custom properties, to versions, etc. Okay, so this was a an overview of the web user interface of connections, which is of course very important. But as I mentioned before, there's this trend to mobile that is really a very, very big wave and um, is very pervasive now. Because of that, we decided to invest a lot in mobile support for IBM connections. And meanwhile, we have a pretty comprehensive set of capabilities uh, uh, supported on the mobile devices, such as iOS devices, iPads and iPhones, also Android devices and Blackberry devices. Um, also, very important to integrate with desktops. Uh, many people are working in Nodes, many people are working in the Windows Explorer with the file system, and we also invested in providing connectors into those environments so that directly from Nodes you can interact with IBM connections, uh, drag and drop files from Nodes to connections to share them in files, uh, drag and drop files from files into emails, but then of course we don't create a copy of the file, we basically just create a link to the actual file in connections. And um, then from the Windows Explorer, it's possible to take something that's on your desktop and um, drag and drop that into connections files to upload it automatically. Or you can, of course, also use the Windows Explorer connector to access the connections file service and then directly open something in context um, in the Windows Explorer. Um, the file will open, uh, you can edit it, and you can save it back from that context. So that's a very convenient way to interact with connections. How do, you, uh, how do the mobile user interfaces look like? You can see a couple of screenshots. So this shows the activity stream, the status updates inside of a user interface on the iPhone. Um, this is of course very convenient to from, from the road be able to participate, to see what's going on in your social network and to provide quick status updates. Something that people like to do very much from mobile devices. Um, the other thing that we have shown here as an example is ideation. Um, of course, from a device, it's also very easy to just vote quickly on some ideas. You can just tap with your finger on the ideas you like best. And that way, it's possible to get feedback also from people who are on the road and um, use their mobile device. And then on the media gallery, the device, of course, has a particular advantage. You can actually take uh, pictures or videos with an iPhone. So that is something that the application also supports. You can directly, from this mobile application for connections, take pictures, take videos, and directly upload them to connections from this application. 
On the iPad, um, the application has similar features but provides a richer user interface. We optimize to leverage the additional real estate when we are running on the iPad. And we have similar user interfaces for the Android devices and for the BlackBerry devices. So these applications are basically regular applications. We have made those applications available on the respective app stores of those device types. And you can just go to these app stores and uh, click on or, or search for IBM connections. And um, then you get the connections mobile application. You can just install it like any other mobile application. And then it'll be on your device. And then you enter the server name and the user ID and password. And then you can readily use the application and access connections through it. A couple of new features we have recently introduced in the latest release. We just uh, provided a new release early June. Uh, we have added offline, cap uh, offline capabilities for files. So it's possible to already select a couple of files and um, load them to your device while you're still at the office. Um, they, are st they are then stored in an offline store um, that is managed by Connections Files. That store is also encrypted so that if the device is lost or stolen, um, no information is leaking. That's something that we made sure that it's protected by encryption. And um, the other very important area here is application management. Um, it's possible now to control whether users can download. That is something that some companies want to restrict. Some companies want users from their mobile devices to only have live access to information, but not store anything on the device. Other companies are more liberal and allow things to be stored on the device, so that is something that can be controlled uh, and can, be, can also be controlled on a per user group basis. The other very important topic is uh, customization. It's possible to customize the user interface to some extent by configuring some things on the connection server, and then the mobile application will um, react to that and render the appropriately uh, selected pictures and um, the styling so that the mobile application, while it's always the same mobile application coming from the App Store, it will adapt to the settings on the server that you have set for your enterprise. Okay, and then after this um, information that was all about what is already existing today in connections, here I have a couple of information on futures. Um, so what will be the main things that we'll see next in connections? One thing is the activity stream. Um, we have an activity stream already today where you can share status updates and you, you can see what's going on in your network, what people are saying, what people are sharing, etc. But it's a closed activity stream today. Uh, it's not providing public APIs just yet, but in the next release we will provide a public API for the activity stream and that will enable people to contribute events to the activity stream or to have applications contribute events to the activity stream. So for example, if you have an SAP system or you have an HR system or you have some other kind of system, maybe a domino-based application that you want to integrate with connections, then you can make that application generate events um, and it's basically simple JSON posts that need to be posted to the connection server. And then as a result of that, that information from that, uh, from that other application will actually show up in people's activity stream as well. So by opening up the API for that, I think we enabled a lot of interesting use cases for integration of other applications with IBM connections. It is also possible then to provide an embedded application associated with those events. So if you want to enable people to directly interact with that SAP application or with an object in it, or directly interact with an object on a Domino server that is um, the subject of an event, then you can also do that and you can provide an embedded application for the respective event types as an open social gadget. And then this open social gadget can be displayed and launched from the connections activity stream. It's also, by the way, the same open social gadget specification that we are implementing and supporting in Lotus Nodes. So then the embedded applications will not only work in IBM connections, but will also work in the context of Lotus Nodes as well. Another big topic is enhanced communities. Um, in terms of community enhancements, what we are working on is to provide also an activity stream for communities um, to allow to add entire LDAP groups to communities, also to have various enhancements in the file handling inside of communities. And then also we are adding events so that um, community members will be able to post events and then other community members can um, RSVP and can say whether or not they will attend that event and also it will be possible to comment on those events. So very nice capability um, to announce events to communities. Another thing that will come then is uh, another mobile application update to support those new features in the mobile applications as well. And also you will see richer security options in the mobile applications and also a couple of other enhancements. 
Um, then one thing that's also very important is we will also provide integration with uh, Lotus Note Social Edition. Um, it will be possible that when you get a notification from connections, like for example that a file was shared with you or that um, some discussion forum update happened or that somebody invited you to, your net, uh, to their network, um, then um, if you see those email notifications in Notes, Social Edition, you will be able to click on them and then instead of showing the email, uh, the actual object will come up in Notes Social Edition directly. So you will be able to directly from Notes then interact with the file and like it or comment on it um, and, um, and interact with it. Or you will be able to directly from Notes Social Edition accept network invitations from connections and so forth. Um, and as I said, the embedded application that you might want to develop for your own applications, um, that is something that also will work in the context of Node Social Edition, not only in the context of the Connections Activity Stream itself. And a very important um, social portal integration, that is something that we also will build further out. And um, that actually is a nice segue into the next topic, which is the integration of IBM Connections and WebSphere Portal. Uh, but before we go there, I'd like to briefly stop um, in case there's a couple of questions on what I talked so far. Any questions so far? Okay, then I'll move on to the next topic. So the next topic is social portal. Why are social portals so important? Um, basically for the reasons that I mentioned before. Um, in order to become a social business, it's very important to not only give information to customers, or partners or employees. It's very important to also engage those customers or partners or employees and go into a dialogue with them to really start interacting with them and really solicit uh, their feedback. And that's really what a social portal can achieve. If you use a social portal as your website, then your website becomes truly social. Um, it'll have things like forums and communities and uh, blogs with comments where people can engage, where people can provide feedback. And that way you can really build this kind of bi-directional communication uh, between your enterprise and between people. This creates a lot of value. It can deepen the relationships with customers. It can generate ideas faster by having that input um, early on and being able to constructively use that input um, as you develop your products and services. And it can also be used to optimize the workforce, as I mentioned before. A couple of examples that I'd like to briefly show. One is a customer example of Omron. Um, Omron is active in industrial automation. Um, they have um, a pretty big number of employees across multiple countries. And they now have deployed a social portal for a part of their company um, of 2,000 users. And um, that social portal um, exactly realizes that vision. It has some information that is managed and is disseminated by the company um, to this group of 2,000 people. But then also it has the appropriate forums and the appropriate community integration to create that back channel so that feedback can really be obtained and um, it's really possible to have the website um, have a dialogue with its users. Another example that I'd like to highlight is an intranet scenario, um, is, which is um, proving that this also works at very large scale. This is IBM's own deployment, um, our combination of WebSeer Portal and IBM Connections, which is used by 400,000 people actively. And um, this is probably one of the most sophisticated uh, ones right now. Uh, what you can see here is you can see a couple of tabs here. Um, these tabs are already personalized. So this, these are the tabs that I see because I'm in IBM Germany and I'm in software group and I'm an architect. So that determines what kinds of tabs I see. But other people in IBM who are in hardware or who are in services or who are in sales, they would see different kinds of tabs. So that always what is displayed here is really suitable for the person looking at it. It's a personalized experience that doesn't flood the information with information, uh, that, that doesn't flood people with information they don't need. It's a really targeted personalized experience that displays the right information and the right applications to the right people at the right time. In addition to that, now we have added social information. So there's this connect and share portlet where people can share information and connect. And also into the search, we have integrated IBM connections as a search uh, source and um, that allows you to find social content as well from this portal environment. So that's one example. Um, and I'll show a couple of other examples how this can be done as well as we proceed through the slides. In principle, social portals can be set up in a couple of ways. You can set up social portals for the intranet, or you can set up social portals for the extranet. 
For the intranet case, what we typically recommend is a hybrid deployment. What we mean by that is that the full connections user interface, including the web user interface, including the mobile applications that I introduced before, and including the desktop integration that I introduced before, the full connections user experience would be made available to users. But then in addition to that, the social content from connections that is considered most important by the company would also be featured to particular audience in the portal. That's a very good way how you can promote certain communities or how you can promote certain important blog posts by executives or how you can promote certain important wikis with important information to the people who should see it. You basically leverage the personalization capabilities and the targeting capabilities of WebSeer Portal uh, to feature select content from the social network. And that's a very powerful value proposition because then you get the best of both worlds. You get the rich social ad hoc networking and everybody can create communities and connect and interact and collaborate as they see fit. But then the enterprise is able to highlight some information that is important. Um, communities on very important initiatives, for example, um, and make them broadly accessible and um, aware to all the employees that should be aware of that. Uh, an example that we do in IBM is we have a Smarter Planet initiative that is pretty big, of course, and um, Smarter Planet communities and Smarter Planet information is, of course, then also featured very um, deliberately in our portal for the employees. Uh, the other case that's very important is um, reaching your customers. Um, that's typically done through business-to-consumer portals, and there typically you would use a different approach. For business-to-consumer portals, you would typically not want to expose the desktop connectors, and you would typically not want to expose the full connections user interface. You typically want to feature select information to your customers, um, select forums, select communities, and um, then have web support really as the entry point, as the one portal to your enterprise. Both, if po uh, both is possible. We enable both use cases. Um, and um, the customers can just pick what they want based on whether they have an intranet use case, then this hybrid use case is what we typically would recommend, or whether it's a B2C use case for business to consumer, um, then this kind of portal front end use case or portal front end approach is what we typically would recommend. This shows an example for the intranet. Um, this is a showcase that we have set up based on WebSeer Portal 7 and Connections uh, 301. And what you can see here is we have a couple of information elements from Portal that are coming out of the web content management in WebSeer Portal. So those are managed content elements that can be part of campaigns that can be published and can be approved through approval workflows. So this is um, official information here and here and here. But then it's also complemented by information from the social network that is featured in that context. So contextually, um, here we display a couple of blog posts related to the topic, and um, here we, we display a couple of other information from the social network. What's also possible then is wherever you have a name, uh, like here and here and here, you can click on it, and then the business card can also come up in IBM, uh, the, the connections business card can also come up in WebSeer portal. And then from the business card, of course, you can see whether the person is online or offline, if you also have integrated with same time. And if this person is online, you can just click on this um, presence awareness button, and then the same time chat would come up, and you could chat with that person, or you could initiate from there a video conference, or click to call, or screen sharing, or whatever you want to do to interact with that person. So it's a nice progression. You find some information um, that is uh, featured for you in the portal. When you have some questions about some of this information, you might just look at who wrote it and get the business, uh, the business card of that person. And um, if you really now want to ask that person a question, then you can do so by bringing up a chat from that context. Another thing that we have enabled more recently is the concept of community pages. And community pages go one step further. So in the previous case, I showed you how individual portlets could be integrated into portal pages. But um, the other thing that we wanted to achieve is to integrate entire communities into WebSeer Portal. And for integrating entire communities, of course, it would not have been appropriate to do it via one portlet and, say, have a community portlet or something like that. Uh, what we did in it, uh, instead of that is we decided to put communities into Portal uh, front-ended by community pages. And these community pages can be associated with communities in a way so that if you put social portlets on those community pages, then they will automatically scope themselves to the community and show information from that community. As an example, I could have a community about beer, and um, then 
um, you can create a portal page and associate that portal page with the community. And then um, the portal page will always show the social information from that community uh, based on the portlets that are added to the page. In addition to that, however, you can also show other information. So what you see here again is a mix of information, um, some coming from the community that is associated with the page, such as this blogs information and this forum information and this community overview information and the membership here. But then you also have a couple of other information elements that come from other things that have been integrated into this portal page. Because besides the social portlets that show community information, you can always also sprinkle in some other portlets that show some information from an SAP backend or that show some information from business process management or show some information from other things that WebSeo Portal can integrate. Uh, for example, also show information from WebSeo Portal's own web content management. I think that's really the very nice value proposition of this, right? You can represent communities in Portal through these community pages. You can also, of course, then feature these community pages based on personalization rules, uh, make them show up in certain prominent places in the navigation in Portal for certain groups of people that should know them. And then, however, you can combine social information and other information in those community pages in a very flexible fashion. How does it work from an operational point of view? Uh, from an operational point of view, it works like this, that uh, community owners who have appropriate rights to create pages in Portal can create pages for their communities and associate those pages with the community. And then after that, they can put additional information on the pages, uh, be it community portlets, or be it other portlets um, if they have the appropriate access rights. And then the result is that um, the community page is established and people who have access to the community will automatically have access to the community page as well. An example, here we have an example of a sales team website and um, the sales team works together as much as they can. But um, in the current website, there's a problem. Um, the current website has information about sales figures and um, achievements and also some latest news that come from external sources. But um, if the sales team want to, wants to now discuss something about this, like the sales team may want to discuss these recent activities or they might want to discuss these figures, um, then what, the, what would they do in a typical case? Um, likely, in order to discuss this, they would communicate via email or they would communicate via instant messaging um, or may, maybe they would just communicate via the phone um, and that is, of course, something that then um, is somewhat transient. Um, it's point-to-point -point discussions. One person talks to one other person, and the others are left out. And from that perspective, this kind of approach can, con can, can result in disconnects. And also, of course, then the conversations are not captured. Um, the conversations just um, happen where they happen, in email, in same time, or in telephone conversations. And they are not available from the context of the page that I showed before afterwards. A way to overcome this is to socialize the page and to add social networking to that page. Uh, for example, by adding some of the capabilities of uh, profiles, communities, blogs, activities, forums, you can take this website and add additional elements to it, like um, uh, add a forum and um, add a list of people who are members of the community. And then suddenly it becomes interactive. And then what really can be done is people can discuss in the context of the page. Um, in the same context where you have these sales figures and have these recent sales activities, in the same context you also have discussions. And in the same context you also have activities and tasks. And in the same context you can also see who is actually on the sales team, who is actually members of, the, of that community. And that of course provides a huge amount of value. Suddenly the sales team members can have discussions in the forum in the context of this page. Um, if two people discuss something in that forum, other people can also see what was discussed when they come back from the road. And um, therefore, it's much easier to stay in touch. And of course, uh, of course afterwards, um, the outcome of those discussions, the conclusions, are also still available in the forum and they don't get lost. So I think this is a big value proposition, um, how it can really have very big advantages to socialize these kinds of web pages and associate them with communities that can capture the conversations and can facilitate the communication in a better way. And with this, the outcome is very significant, right? After this, um, everyone is connected through the community. Um, if some people discuss something in the community, others can later see it. Um, so it's very easy this way to stay in touch and for everybody to know what's going on. 
How is this done from a, from a user interface point of view in Web Support? And it's actually pretty simple. Um, you can create a community page, you can associate it with the community, and um, then once you've done that, you can just drag and drop additional portlets to that community page. So for example, you could select activities or blogs or uh, bookmarks or wikis or forums, etc. Just drag and drop it on that page. And as I said before, it'll automatically scope itself to the content from that community and automatically show the right thing. How does Martin associate a page with a community? In Web Server Portal 7, um, that is a little bit of a manual step, so you basically have to look up the community URL from the community, and then you paste it in here. Uh, but with Web Server Portal 8 that was released this May, it's going to become, or it's becoming much easier. Um, here you can actually browse the communities in connections from Web Server Portal. So in the Web Server Portal administration user interface, we have integrated this community browsing um, API, uh, this uh, community browsing user interface. You can see what communities are there that you have access to, and then you can select one, and the selected community is then automatically associated with that community page. And after that, you can drag and drop the portlets to complete it. So it's a very easy way to do this in Web Server Portal 8. In terms of portlets, what we have available today is portlets for profiles, including profile and network and status updates, but also forums, blogs, wikis, bookmarks, activities, and tech cloud. And we also have search integration so that it's possible to search the information in connections from the context of Web Server Portal. What you basically would do for this is you would point the search engine in Web Server Portal to the seed lists of IBM connections, and then the connection search results show up together with other results that the search, uh, that this uh, portal search engine delivers. And also here, of course, you get the nice business card integration so that when some information here um, is search results from connections, it has an author, and then you can click on the author to get the business card and um, bring up in-context information about the person again. This is, of course, very important. The integration of the information from the social network into the search engine of the portal, I think, is really essential to make the information uh, truly valuable and make sure that everybody can find it. What's also important to point out is um, uh, the customizability of the portlets. You can pin portlets in different ways. Um, you can pin portlets to communities, and if you drag and drop some portlet into a community page, that's actually the default, that it's pinned to the community and shows content from that community. So a forum portlet in a community would automatically show the community's forum. Um, a wiki portlet in a community would automatically show this community's wiki, etc. But you can also further customize that. And for portlets that you put on, on main portal pages or that you put on community pages, you can always change it and um, configure what it really should display, whether, for example, the blogs portlet should display all blogs or should display a list of blogs or should display the, um, the information for the current community or the most recent blog article for the current community. So this is very flexible. You can really pin those portlets exactly to what you want to feature in the respective content. Uh, in, in the respective context, I wanted to say. Then a little bit on futures um, in the last few minutes. Um, I, I did introduce a couple of futures that are coming in IBM Connections. And uh, for WebSeal Portal, we are going to provide similar portlets then for these other new features in Connections. So we'll also have an activity stream portlet in WebSeal Portal um, to expose the enhanced activity stream function in a first-class fashion in Web Server Portal. And that will actually also support the same embedded applications. So before I told you that it's possible to provide embedded applications for the active stream and connections and for nodes, and the same embedded applications will also be able to display in the context of Web Server Portal uh, from the Web Server Portal's activity stream portlet. We are also working on a files and media portlet to feature files and media in the context of Web Server Portal sites. And then also we are working on an event portlet uh, to feature the new events inside of WebSeal Portal. And we're also working on mobile access for these portlets so that they can be used in mobile websites as well. Okay, with this, I pretty much reached the end of the presentation. So in summary, I'd like to reiterate um, that um, in IBM, we are making a major investment in social business. We believe that social business it's really important um, for companies to succeed and for IBM to exceed, uh, succeed as well. We actually have already become a social business. Um, becoming a social business um, can connect us better to our customers and partners and employees and um, can provide better innovation and um, can provide better services to our customers. 
um, in IBM social business offerings, there's a couple of key elements. One is um, social websites and social networking, which I just explained. There's also a, a couple of other things that are very important, like social content and social analytics. There are also offerings in that space. Of course, all of that is done in a secure and scalable and compliant fashion. Um, it's also important to note that social networking has the, the very real capability to become the memory for an enterprise, um, to become the place where a lot of things that are important in an enterprise are remembered, both the relationships between people and people, but also relationships between people and content, and a lot of actual content that provides valuable information. And um, because social networking is so important, and because it's so important to establish a channel between en enterprises and companies and between employees, customers, and partners, we think that social websites are really very important um, that very soon it will be necessary that all websites become social websites um, that really are interactive and can solicit feedback and obtain feedback from their users. Okay, that was the end of my presentation. With that, I'd like to open it up for questions. Any questions? All right, then, thanks a lot for your attention.